Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. We're at the Young Israel of Plainview Temple for their Holocaust Remembers program featuring Holocaust expert, Dr. Judd Newborn. Today we're going to find out whether the Jews during the Holocaust really went to their deaths as lambs to, uh, to the slaughter. Part of this Holocaust Remembrance Day, this Yom HaShoah, is not just to remember what happened, but to learn from what happened. And so we believe that Dr. Newborn can teach us some lessons from resistance that we can use going forward. One way for us to counter Holocaust denial and anti-Semitism is to reach deep into that black hole to which the Nazis would have consigned the truth and salvage from it the shreds of evidence that tell the unsung story of Jewish armed resistance. Today I'm going to be speaking on Lions of Judah, the complete story of Jewish anti-Nazi resistance and its lessons in courage for today. Jews who resisted the Nazis uh, resisted in every form known to mankind. The fact is I'm going to reveal today that when, when overcoming obstacles that no other people in Nazi-occupied Europe had to face, they resisted brilliantly and they even invented some forms of resistance not previously known. This candle, number three, is also for Rita Rosani, killed in action on the Rosh Hashanah at age 24, 1944, and the only woman to receive posthumously an Italian military gold medal. Today I actually have eight votive candles. I like them figuratively for each form of Jewish resistance, because if one lit one candle per act of resistance, you'd have to have a room full of candles. So for those who fought in the death camps, against all odds, light Hanukkah candle number seven. Dr. Newborn lit candle after candle, detailing skirmishes and struggles against the Nazis, to the surprise of some who actually had relatives that were part of the resistance. We did have one member of my family who was in France and part of the resistance during the Holocaust, and one of the things my father always used to talk about is how um, impressed he was by that, right? He was somebody who fought back. Um, but I, I learned so much today um, in terms of, you know, that it was people all over Europe, all over the world, really. Um, you know, Dr. Newborn was mentioning one group of people um, who saved um, 117,000 people uh, indirectly in Algeria. And it just the stories are, are incredibly inspiring. Judging from recent headlines, it seems that society has not learned from the lessons of World War II. Certainly in the last 20 years, the amount of genocide that's gone on in Europe, in Africa, in, in Asia, it's just awful. And it's frightening to see that as a society we haven't learned and we haven't figured out how to control it and stop it. To stop the madness, Dr. Newborn says we must take action. You have to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. We have to find ways to mobilize ourselves when we see different kinds of genocide or other oppression happening and do something about it. Mark organized this event to encourage the congregation to get involved. I find that putting together programs like this uh, unifies people, educates people, gives people power. Most importantly, he wants to give the power of knowledge to the youth. Let's have more of our kids here. Let's have our 18-year-olds and our 20-year-olds, the ones that are in school here, to listen to Dr. Judd Newborn, to listen about how proud we should be, how they weren't lambs to the sword. It's more important now than ever for Jewish students who are learning to be proud of who they are, and without programs like this, they're not going to be in a confident position to really know how to educate everyone else who may say, these are the same Jews that we've always hated. 